Hello and welcome back to Wildfire Explained, the weekly show where we go over the key aspects of wildfire. Today we're going to be talking about the fire triangle. The three sides of the fire triangle consist of oxygen, heat, and fuel. And all three of these have to be present and combined in order for combustion to occur and be sustained. So diving into the individual sides of the fire triangle, we'll take a look at oxygen first, which supports the chemical processes of a wildfire. So you can think of that fuel burning, it's reacting with the oxygen in the air around it, releasing heat and generating combustion products, things like gases, smoke or embers in a process called oxidation. So in order for this combustion to occur, it requires 16% oxygen. So the air around a fire or the air we breathe, which consists of 21% oxygen is enough for that combustion to occur. The other side of the fire triangle is heat. This is the side that consists of that initial ignition source, but that heat also has to remain for that fire to continue growing. There are a number of different causes that can start a fire. The most common natural cause is lightning, while some of the most common human causes would be things like cigarettes, campfires, matches, or unfortunately, arson. The last side of the fire triangle is fuel. So this is pretty self-explanatory. This is the material that is burning. It can consist of basically any combustible material, but in a wildfire, it'll typically be things like grasses or shrubs, timber or slash. So if all three of these things have to be combined for that fire to continue burning, then the way to stop a fire is to remove one side of the fire triangle in a process called breaking the fire triangle. So for example, if you wanted to remove the heat aspect, you could apply things like water or dirt or other methods to get rid of that heat. If you wanted to remove the oxygen aspect, you could cover up the fire and restrict its supply of oxygen. You could think of this as if you were to take an upside down cup and put it over a candle. You're restricting the oxygen supply to that flame. Now with fuels, there are a number of things you could do. One is just clearing out the vegetation. You could think of this of if you're making your house fire safe or if you're digging a fire line so that by the time the fire gets to that line, the vegetation has been cleared out, you've removed that side of the fire triangle and hopefully the fire can't grow any further. So within the fire triangle, I wanna dive in a little closer towards the heat side of the triangle because there's three dif different methods of heat transfer. There's conduction, convection, and radiation. So within conduction, that is heat transfer through direct contact. In everyday life, you could think of this as grabbing the hot handle on a pan. In a wildfire, this actually doesn't play that big of a role because wood is actually a poor conductor, meaning it doesn't transfer heat very well through conduction. Well, convection can play a larger role when it comes to wildfires. With this, you can think of the smoke plume. You have all that rising hot air and gases and burning embers moving around and that can dry out vegetation or even lead to some ignitions. The final method of heat transfer is radiation. This is where heat is going straight through either a gas or a vacuum, and it's not heating up the medium itself. If that doesn't make sense, you can just think of standing out in the sunlight. You're being heated up by radiation. In a fire, this could be heat from the fuel, preheating some fuel surrounding that through radiation, or in some cases, even leading to an ignition. So that's the fire triangle. It consists of oxygen, heat, fuel, and the moral of the story might be that if you're trying to stop a fire, you have to remove one side or more of this fire triangle. So hopefully you learned something today. Stay tuned for next time where we'll be covering, covering the topographic influence on wildfire. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Laboratory.